Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so excited that you're here with us to worship today as we come under the name of Jesus Christ as we gather together to worship. I'm going to invite you, if you would, to stand with me as we declare today our praise to the name above all names. Let's get our hands going and praise to him today. I'll praise in the valley and praise on the mountain. Praise when I'm sure, and I praise when I'm doubting. Sing it out to him. I praise when I'm numbered, and praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drown it. As long as church hey that was kind of weak thank you kind of weak for the blessing that we had this week from all the rain we had been praying for rain and we need pep it up a little bit good morning church 
Much better. Thank you. I'm Alan Seibel, Associate Pastor, and it's my joy just to welcome you today. And the Lord did bless us with some rain. Some people got maybe more than they wanted, some not as much as they wanted, but hey, we always get what the Lord wants us to have, so we're, we're grateful for that. If you haven't stopped by our welcome center over here, and if you're brand new, we've got a gift bag that we want to give to you. Just our way of saying thank you for uh, worshiping with us today. My wife Leah will be over there, and she will be glad to, to, to welcome you, to give you one of those, those gift bags. Uh, if you haven't scanned our QR code, we are kind of doing things different. We have one QR code that will allow, take you to a link that will allow you to look at our bulletin, sign up for events online, all that. We're trying to streamline things, and so you can see that, that QR code, so I encourage you to do that. If you haven't downloaded our app yet, encourage you to do that. Search in your uh, app store, Oakwood Enid. I want to just tell you what we did this past Thursday night that you helped participate in. We did an event called Light the Night. Light the Night we hosted, this is the best count that we could, could come up with. It was 1,275 people walked through our door on Thursday night. Yeah. The Gideons handed out 768 Bibles to the, the kids trick-or-treating. Uh, some adults took, took the Bibles as, as well. We were able to do that because of your generous donation of candy and money for that. And so we impacted some people that maybe have never been in the door of a church before. Maybe they want to come back because just through your love, your expressions, they were able to uh, see Jesus Christ living in us. Coming up, November 10th, we have our child dedication class, and then the dedication will be on the 24th, so you can sign up online or in the app for either one of those. Also on November 10th, we have an event called Surviving the Holidays, and it's being hosted by our grief care ministry, and it's a, a supper that we are providing for you. It's actually going to be cooked by the Culinary Arts Department at Autry Tech and served by those students. And it's for someone that's going through a, a time of grieving. Maybe it, it's not necessarily just an immediate time of grieving, but maybe it's something from the past that you're continuing to deal with. It's our way of ministering, because sometimes the holidays are tough for those that are, are, uh, are grieving and have lost a loved one. So we want you to, to come share that evening with us. You can sign up in the app or online for that. It's called Surviving the Holidays. The supper is at five o'clock. We have a new women's mentoring program that will begin after January 1. It's called Flourish. Uh, please direct your attention to the screen behind me. We have a little uh, highlight video that kind of explains this a little bit more. Have you noticed that the world around us is constantly telling us what to prioritize? It insists that we create fast-paced rhythms to obtain more wealth, more joy, more peace, offering that we run at a pace that keeps us separated from genuine community. But we believe differently. We believe in a journey where generations are together at a table, where women are encouraged to lead and learn from one another, where deep-rooted community is the priority and remaining rooted in scripture is the foundation for all that we do. That's why we created a journey for you to engage in the meaning of discipleship. A journey where every season of life becomes an opportunity for growth. A journey where women come together in faith to see how God's Word can lead to meaningful relationships. It's time for this journey. It's time to flourish. Hi, I'm Angie Morris and I'm one of your Flourish admins. Flourish calls women to a higher standard of living, a decision to live a life rooted in the word of God and the love of Jesus. Such growth is fostered in the rich soil of a mentoring relationship. God created us to be in community with other believers because he knew we couldn't do life alone. To Flourish, women benefit from the encouragement of those who have gone before us and reflect Jesus. Flourish is a year-long mentoring journey based on scripture and already experienced by almost 4,000 women before us. 
This study will help you establish a strong mentoring relationship as you dig into understanding God's truth and love together through his word. If you're ready to be obedient to God's command in Titus 2, for us to be led and to lead as a community of women, please join us on November 17th, immediately after second service, in the sanctuary for a brief overview of how you can find your place at Oakwood as we flourish together. Okay, that informational meeting is going to be the 17th of November. I believe it said the 10th in our bulletin, but it is the 17th. So that will be after the second service. So you can sign up. If you got questions that you need answered, uh, you can go to the kiosk out in our east lobby out here. We'll try to get those uh, questions an answered for you. As we get to ready to continue in our worship, we're going to have a time where we can just stand up and greet those around us in the Lord. If you did not get one of the little uh, communion packets on the way in, those emblems, you can do so. Uh, this is a great time while we're greeting. You can slip out that door, or grab one of those, but shake a hand, hug a neck. Just let those around you know that you are glad they are here this morning. As we begin to make our way back to our seats, I want to invite you just to remain standing with me um, because we're going to go into just a time of uh, a responsive reading together. And my hope is with these words that come from scripture, we can ground ourselves this morning in this fact that we have come to worship and praise our God because he is worthy of everything we could give. He has given everything for us. So this morning, I want to invite you to read with me what's in yellow and I'm going to read out what's in white. So give thanks to the Lord, proclaim God's greatness. Tell the nations what God has done. Sing praise to the Lord, tell of the wonderful things God has done. Be glad that we belong to him. Let all who worship him rejoice. The Lord is our God. His commands are for all the world. God will keep his covenants forever. His promises last a thousand generations. Praise the Lord. And that be our heart this morning as we continue to sing to our Heavenly Father. A thousand generations Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages to the Lamb And all who've gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb Let's sing your name Your name is the highest Your name is the greatest in your name it stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions in your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. If you've been forgiven, and if you 
He's the God of all creation He's been good through all the ages Push or pull, He never changes He never changes He's the God who moves Reconciles the broken hearted And in him we found redemption Redemption Glory to the one who holds it all Glory to the one who saved my soul To the one who
my batteries are dead. I'm a little late. <laughs> no, I, I didn't realize what I had done until I went to pop my mic on just now, back there, and it was already on. <laughs> So I took my pack out and it was red and blinking, which means you got one minute. <laughs> so I ran back to my office and got a battery and I'm here all during that bumper. So, <laughs> is it hot in here <laughs> or is it, is it just me? It is a little hot in here. Well, hey, welcome to Oakwood. We are glad you're here. I'm glad to be here now that I have a mic that'll work the whole entire sermon. But no, seriously, we are a church that is growing to know, love, and live Jesus. And uh, we are glad you are on that journey with us. And we uh, we, uh, take great pride in saying thank you for being here this morning as part of God's family. And we want to grow in Christ together. We're going to have a great opportunity uh, for that in this this series uh, for this month. It is coming into a season that we all know about, right? It's called the most wonderful time of the year, right? It's called the holiday season. Many of you uh, might embrace this season, and maybe some of you, you're like, eh, I don't, I don't know if I like this season as much as uh, other times of the year, but it does bring out the best in a lot of people, right? You can feel the spirit of it as, as, as Christmas approaches, as we go through Thanksgiving. And it, it, it bears out in statistical data that, that people have a tendency to be, to be happier, to be more pleasant, to be more joyful in this season. Because it is the holiday season. And yet, in addition to those characters that we have, like, you know, the angels and the shepherds and Santa and all the fun and all, all of that stuff, there's Scrooge, right? Right? There's Scrooge. And, and the Grinch. And there's these characters that go along with the season as well, which do represent some people's attitudes and actions, right? Well, we're going to begin a series today about gratitude. And over the next four weeks, we're going to dive deep into what does it mean to cultivate a life of gratitude, of thanksgiving. What does it mean to be a person where uh, it's not based on circumstances, our joy and, and our thankfulness? It's actually just based on that I have a relationship with Almighty God. And we're going we're gonna to dive into this material together. So I invite you, if you have a Bible this morning, turn to 1 Thessalonians. That's going to be our, our main scripture today. We're really going to just focus on three verses there, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, as always, you're welcome to follow along in the app, uh, on your your phone, your tablet, your iPad. Download the Oakwood app, go to sermon notes, and all the notes are there for you. And if you want to follow along, uh, there's an insert in your bulletin that has an outline. But we want you to engage the Word of God this morning. And so uh, take notes, uh, look in your Bible, and allow the Lord to speak to you this morning. And as I was thinking about this, I was... Uh, thinking about people that, that statistically it says as you age, you have a tendency to get a little more gripey and a little more grumpy. Has anyone ever met that person that maybe, maybe they were a little more joyful earlier in life and then the aches and pains come and life happens and it seems like they just, you know, and we can kind of get that way around the holiday season too. It reminded me, I was at a funeral one time and uh, walking, you know, sometimes when you do that, you're at a graveside and you're walking through and you're looking at the tombstones. I remember coming up on this tombstone for a guy that lived to be 100 years old. And on his tombstone, it said, he lived to a gripe old age. <laughs> and I thought, man, I, I don't want my tombstone to, to say that. And I don't know very many people that would be like, yeah, you know what? That's my goal in life is to be like Ebenezer Scrooge and make everybody just grumpy and gripey about everything. And yeah, we have this tendency sometimes. And I'm telling you what, if you can develop an attitude and a heart of gratitude, it can combat those negative emotions, perspectives that we have that are maybe unhealthy, the outlooks in life. Because it is a powerful mindset, and it transforms our perspective. It can transform relationships. In fact, 
I'll be honest with you, it can transform your overall whole life experience. And it's not just about being polite and, oh, if you're just a little more thankful, but it's about developing a heart that recognizes God's goodness and grace in every circumstance. Let's read the text this morning together. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, we're going to read verses 16 through 18. Three verses, they're not very long, all right, but hang with me. Here we go. Verse 16. Rejoice always. And that's it. That's two, two words. That's not bad. Okay, let's go to verse 17. Pray continually. So I told you it not, it's not bad. It's not heavy lifting there. And then verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Sounds so simple, right? And it's short. It's concise. It's straight to the point. So let's unpack this a little bit. It says here that we're to rejoice always. Now, if you're like me and you're like, well, I want to go back to the original language that the Bible was written in. Let's see and make sure these translations into English here are right. So I look up the word uh, rejoice, and it means to have exceeding joy, to thrive. And the word always means at all times. So we are to be exceedingly joyful and thriving at all times. Anybody? All times, continually, always. Then you get to verse 17, and it says to pray, and prayer is communication with God in its simplest form. And so it says we are to be communicating with God, communing with God continually. It's an ongoing action, present participle verb in the Greek, and it means that it actually doesn't have an end. And so we are to pray continually without ending, just praying, an attitude of prayer, a relationship with God through communication all the time. And then we get to verse 18, and it says to give thanks in all circumstances. And and I want to stop there for a second, because, you know, I give thanks. What does thanks mean exactly? Well, if you look up that word in the Greek, it's a really cool connection here. That word in the Greek is the word eucharisteo, eucharisteo. You may have heard, if you've been to maybe a different denominational church or some kind of a liturgical background, sometimes they call um, the Lord's Supper or communion, they call it the Eucharist. And actually is a form of this word, eucharisteo. Eucharisteo is what we translate here as thanks or being thankful. Sometimes it's translated as thanksgiving in scripture. Eucharisteo. What's What's, what's a little nuance about eucharisteo is that it's actually kind of a compound Greek word. You know what a compound word is in English. It kind of is the same thing here in the Greek. And what's interesting is that first word in our text today, in verse 16, rejoice, that re- word rejoice is kairo. Kairo. And if you were pronouncing it like correctly in like the Greek, it'd be like some phlegm in your throat when you say like kairo, kairo. But we'll just say kairo, we'll Americanize it. Kairo means rejoice. Another form of that word is kaira or charis, which means joy. And then you have you charis steo that has the word rejoice or joy right in the middle of thanksgiving. A word that we translate as thanks and thankfulness and thanksgiving has that word for rejoice or joy right in the middle. And it gets you thinking, doesn't it? It kind of messes with you a little bit because you're like, okay, wait, wait. If I was a joyful person, I'd probably be more, be more thankful and have more gratitude. And, and if I'm a thankful person, I'll probably have a more joyful outlook. And oh, okay, I can kind of see their relationship there. And in the subtlety of even the linguistics here, I feel like God is telling us something. But it doesn't just stop there in verse 18. It says, give thanks in what? All circumstances. So you know me, I'm a smarty. I'm like, yeah, I mean all? Like, let's go look, you know? And I looked it up, and all translates as all or every. So, yeah. Give thanks in all or every circumstance. And I'll be, okay, we just put a period there, stop. No, no, it didn't stop there. Then it goes on, it says, for this is God's will for you. How many people want to know God's will for your life? How many, how many people want to know God's will? Know God's will for your life, anyone? Yeah. All the people who are not raising their hand, they're, they're lying to you, okay? They want to know God's will. Everybody wants to know God's will. I never meet people like, oh, I don't want to know God's will. 
Everybody wants to know God's will. And here it's just telling you this is God's will for you, that you do what? Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in every circumstance, in all your circumstances, for this is God's will for you to figure out on your own. Just do it. Oh, wait, no, that's not what it says. Um, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God is amazing because he always gives us the remedy. He always gives us the answer. God is, is amazing. So, so catch this. You're to give thanks in every circumstance because this is God's will for you to not figure out on your own, but because of Christ Jesus. Because in Jesus, we have everything we need to be grateful and thankful and have gratitude in every circumstance. And so we'll, we'll rejoice always and pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances because that's God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Let's unpack this together this morning. If you're taking notes, the first thing is this. A mindset of gratitude is God's will for Christians. A mindset of gratitude is God's will for Christians. It's a mindset. If it's a mindset, that means you need to do what? You need to set your mind on it. It's not something that you just acquire. It's not something that you stumble into. Oh, I just woke up today and I have the mindset of gratitude. Oh, I just, well, you know, I just, it just happened. No, no, no. Think about this, folks. This is something that you're going to set your mind on. It's a mindset. In other words, gratitude and being grateful and thankful are not optional for God's people because it says it's his will for us. It's not this simply polite thing that we should do. It's not this, well, that's a nice to have quality for some Christians. No, this is a central part of God's design for our lives. Is it a Christian that has experienced the saving knowledge and love and grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ would be a genuinely and generally thankful and grateful person? And yet sometimes we are not because when I said Scrooge earlier, some of you, that's your reputation around the holidays. <laughs> For some of you, that's the reputation around your family. And it's because you don't embrace gratitude. I think gratitude is a sign of spiritual growth and maturity in your life. As we develop this consistent attitude and this mindset of, gr of gratefulness, we align ourselves with God's design. And in essence, we're constantly growing closer to him because it's what? It's in Christ Jesus that the believer does this. Not on their own. Practicing gratitude also shows that we trust in God's sovereignty over every situation in life. And when we acknowledge his blessings, his provision, we affirm our belief that he is faithful and that he is good, even when we don't fully understand the plan. But it's a mindset. We have to set our minds. It reminds me of that verse. You guys know, several of you know this verse, Colossians 3.2, right? Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind on what? Things above, not on earthly things. It's not circumstantial things. It's not the things of this world. Set your mind on things above, like in Christ Jesus, more than worldly things. This is countercultural, I know, because the world says, hey, it's all based on what? How good your life is. It's all based on your circumstances, which really leads us to number two. We grow to recognize, we grow to recognize God's goodness and provision in every circumstance. We are gonna to grow to recognize his goodness and his provision in every circumstances. Verse 18 said what? This, we're gonna do it in all circumstances, give thanks in all circumstances. And this shows that our faith in God is not dependent on how good our life is in the moment how good my earthly circumstances are. No, this is about how close I am to God. And I know for some of you, this sounds like a forced thing, right? Like just, just, just be grateful. Have, have, a, have a heart of gratitude. I mean, you just, just be this way. But gratitude is not a forced thing. I don't think gratitude is a forced thing. I think it's a trust thing. I think some of us have a hard time with gratitude because we're not trusting God fully. 
We think for some reason we've got to control the outcomes. We've got to be over the circumstances. We have to know the end result. We have to know the plan. We have to know every step along the way. We have to know these things. And yet that's not what it's, what it's saying here. It's saying in Christ Jesus that God is providing a way. Gratitude is not this forced thing. It's a trust thing. And you can be full of gratitude because you trust in God for everything that you need in life. And those people have a tendency to be more grateful. They have a tendency to be more joyful because in the middle of Thanksgiving, there's joy. In the word, in the Greek word, and truly, I think in the experience. The third thing this morning, gratitude strengthens our witness. Gratitude strengthens our witness. When we consistently express gratitude, especially in the difficult times, especially in the difficult times, in all circumstances, it becomes a powerful witness to others. A powerful witness to others. Let me explain how this works in ministry so many times. So many times in ministry, we are called into situations and circumstances that are not fun. Um, sometimes they're, they feel dire. Um, we're oftentimes called in, into ministry and, and to minister into situations where um, a marriage is on the rocks or someone has lost a loved one. Someone just got uh, really bad news about their finances, their, their job. They just lost their job. Uh, they just found out they're going to have to move. They, they've got uh, their financial situation going on. They've got this health scare thing going on. Um, they've, it's all these situations and circumstances in life. And yet it seems like many times through the years, as I've been brought into these situations, I am... Not as shocked as I used to be, but was quite shocked early on in ministry to see how mature Christians handle these things. Probably the pinnacle of this for me was um, in, doing, in doing funerals and being around people that have lost a loved one. And, and, and for probably everyone here, someone has lost a loved one. For some of you, it's your, your mom or your dad, your grandpa, your grandma, your aunt, your uncle. For some of you, it was your best friend. For, for some of you, it's someone in your family that you're just really close to. For some of you, it was your spouse. I think when that happens, it feels like the right arm was just like cut off of your body. It was in one of those situations with a spouse that I remember one time um, counseling with the family, and it was, a, it was a, a, a man who had lost his wife. And I remember in counseling with them, he said this, and, I, and it took a minute for it to register, and then I was like, oh, and... He said, you know, what I'm feeling right now is that I could be really mad at God. So many people, when they lose a loved one, they're mad at God. God, why did this happen? They're so young or so nice or so kind or so good or they're my crutch, they're my rock, they're my person. You know, it's like, why, why did this happen? And we get into this thing where we can be really angry at God. And he said, you know what? I, I was just thinking I could be really angry at God about the time I didn't have or I could be really grateful for the time that I did. How do you think that guy's mourning when he chose to be grateful for the time that he did have instead of being mad at the time that he didn't? You see, it's not, it's not based on circumstances. It can't be. You, can, you, can't, you can't have scripture like this that says, hey, hey, Christians, rejoice always and pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, even when you lose a loved one, because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus if it's circumstantial. Because we go through stuff in life. But I can tell you I was strongly witnessed to by this man's testimony about a heart that had gratitude toward God. It's a strong witness and testimony that in the difficult times we can have a powerful witness. God designed us in such a way that gratitude not only brings us closer to him, but it also enhances our mental and emotional well-being. Did you know that science now actually flushes this out? Yeah, science now confirms what scripture has long said. And it is this, that gratitude can improve mental health, reduce stress, and increase contentment. 
If I had a pill this morning and I could say, hey, if you want to come up after the service and take this pill, this pill will improve your mental health, reduce stress, and increase your contentment. How many people come forward? Can I get an amen? Oh, yeah? Right? <laughs> I mean, everybody's like, yeah, I want some of that. Well, you do have that. You have that right now in Christ Jesus. You have that ability to shift your mindset and it's funny because science now says that people who are more grateful and have an attitude of gratitude in their life, they have improved mental health, reduced stress, and increased contentment. Christians, this is us. And practicing gratitude also affects how we interact with others. That we don't have to be the Grinch or Ebenezer Scrooge when we're going through circumstances and things in life. In fact, we can find ourselves to be more compassionate, more joyful, more forgiving, more patient, more kind. All of these qualities that reflect God to others. Because God in his character and his love for us reflects that to us no matter what we've done to him. Fourth thing this morning. Gratitude is an acknowledgement of God's presence this is so key. Gratitude is an acknowledgement of God's presence. Gratitude is dependent on our view of God's presence in every season and every circumstance that comes our way. In fact, I put it this way to you, that gratitude is an act of trusting in God's presence more than situational outcomes. Catch that. Gratitude is an act of trusting in God's presence more than situational outcomes. Now, folks, this is countercultural, all right? The world says no way. The world says you should have great circumstances, and if you have great circumstances, then everything is good in your life. And if it's not great circumstances in your life, if you're going through some hard stuff, well, they, what they would say is, well, the Lord's, the Lord's not taking care of you. And yet, for Christians, we find out that when we go through the hard stuff, sometimes we feel like God's closer to those who are brokenhearted, to those who are crushed in spirit. I think that's in the scripture somewhere. That it's in those times of hardship and brokenness, we can find a heart of gratitude because he's with us. Psalm 23, right? Though you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he's with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. And gratitude is choosing to trust God regardless of the situational outcomes. Fifth thing this morning, gratitude is something you practice and develop like a spiritual discipline. I actually went around and asked some of our staff this week if they agreed with me on that statement. I said, would you say that gratitude and the practice of gratitude and a person, person um, uh, being thankful and grateful in their life is a spiritual discipline? Kind of got some mixed feedback on that, but hey, you know, I've decided that's where I'm at, so I'm going to say it. I think it's a spiritual discipline. Think about spiritual disciplines that you are called to put into practice. We talked about one just a couple months ago. We talked about solitude, right? Getting alone and getting quiet with God and getting out of the noise of this world and just being in his presence and not with an agenda and not with a prayer and all that, but just being in, pre in the presence of the Lord. That is a discipline. Why? Because nobody does it. You have to discipline yourself to do it. And we won't do the show of hands now, the hands of shame, of how many of you have done that in the last couple of months? Because it's hard. It takes discipline to practice solitude and silence in the Lord. But that's why we call it a spiritual discipline. What about Bible reading? Bible reading, it just happens, right? You just pick it up, you just put it by your forehead, and you just download it, and man, Bible read. No, it's a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline discipline that you have to put into practice. You have to be strategic about it. What about meditating on his word day and night? Thinking about scripture, filling your life and your mind with scripture all the time. It's a spiritual what? It's a spiritual discipline, right? It doesn't just happen. What about praying? Spiritual discipline. What about fasting? 
It's a spiritual discipline, scripture memory. And I could go on and on, and I want to add to that list now, gratitude, being thankful. In all circumstances, is a spiritual discipline. It's not something that's just going to happen. And it's hard. I'm not here to tell you this morning, oh, this is so easy, folks. If you just, no, it's hard. It's hard to live this out. And, and sometimes when you're in the muck and the mire and the situation is not good and your circumstances aren't great, and you come into the series, the series on gratitude and Thanksgiving season, and you're like, dude, I am not, <laughs> this is not a good time for me to be thinking about thankfulness. It is the exact perfect time for you to be thinking about gratitude and thankfulness. Because here's what you got to do sometimes. When the muck and the mire and all the things are coming your way, sometimes you have to stop and you have to ask, God, where are you? Have you done that? In your, in your thing, in your situation. Okay, I got all this going on. I'm super disappointed. I'm, str I'm struggling here. God's big enough to handle your questions. What if you just said, you know what? God, God, where are you? Where are you right now? And I think sometimes when we do that, we say, where is God in this? Then we, it leads us to another question. What is he doing? God, where are you? God, what are you doing? Because I guarantee you this, God knows your situation. And he's doing something. And so many times we see in scripture, it says that God brings beauty from ashes. Picture an ash pile. This black sooty gets all over your hands if you touch it. God will bring beauty out of that. God, God can transform a situation. God can redeem a life that is lost. God can do this. Sometimes we just got to stop. But this is something we're going to have to practice and develop as a spiritual discipline. And the last thing this morning, gratitude has the power to transform a life. Gratitude has the power to transform a life. I want to encourage you to be here the next several weeks because we're going to go deep into this thing. And I would like to see it transform your life. Now, I don't think it's going to just change. You're like, oh, we do a little series and then you'll just be great and so grateful and full of gratitude all the time. But I will tell you this, gratitude will shift your perspective on life when you try to put it into practice. It will transform your life. It will transform your relationships with other people. People will find that joy in the middle of your thanksgiving. It also reorientates our heart toward God's goodness when maybe we've been in a season where we didn't think he's very good. It reorients us to remember God's goodness even when the challenges come. So I, I know where you're at this morning, right? You're at this point. You're like, okay, okay. He said it. It's in the scripture. You can't argue with it, right? Be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And so you're, you're like, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, it's a spiritual discipline. It doesn't just come to you. Okay, yes, yes, but how? I'm going to give you an option, and I, and I hope you'll take me up on this. So about a year ago, I started writing this series, and then I stopped. Um, oh, just be, just, just, there were other things I wanted to speak on and other things I was feeling led. And I, I, I saw a resource available online. And, and I decided, hey, I'm going to get this thing. And, and it, was, it was kind of a focus on gratitude. How to develop a life of gratitude in your life. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the author, uh, Ann Voskamp, who wrote a book, gosh, probably like 10 years ago now, called A Thousand Gifts. And the whole premise of that book was is if you would write down the gifts from the Lord, if you write down your blessings every day and you pay attention to those things, um, that over the course of a year, you write down a thousand gifts. And I was like, you know, I'd really like to do that. So I, I bought myself a little journal and I started doing this um, last year. And I don't know if you can see this um, in here, but it's just my handwriting. And um, I like the way this one is segmented. There, there's tons of these you can get online. There's lots of different ways. But basically what it is, is like 17th. Is what, is what this page says. And so the 17th 
Over here it says month, January, February, March. And so on the 17th of the month, I would write down three things that I'm thankful for. Three, three things, that, three blessings from the Lord, three gifts. Uh, maybe you want to call them three gratitudes and gifts from the Lord. So, and I would write these down for every, every time I came to the 17th of the month, I'd write it on the 17th page. I'd write the, I'd write the, the month on there. And I've got most of this um, um, filled out pretty well because, you know, it's November now. And so I'm October, November, December. And I didn't do it perfectly. There's some days where I only put down like one thing. Um, hard day. Just couldn't come up with more than that. But I'm telling you what, from just personal experience, this was a great challenge to me. Let me just read just some examples of this, of, of gifts from the Lord. And I'm going to go, I'm going to start with you where I just opened in first service and started, which was the 15th. Um, I started with April 15th, tax day. <laughs> and I, I was just like interested, what did I write on April 15th? And so three things on April 15th that I was thankful for. Having enough money to pay my taxes. It's true. So it's the first or like the second year in a long time that I've owed on taxes. I'm one of those guys that always like tries to get it, get it right. And uh, yeah, I was just glad I had enough money in my account just to pay the taxes and I have to get on a payment plan and all those kind of things. We had a little bit of rain and hail on April 15th. I was thankful for that. And it also says I had a great last volleyball practice with parents versus girls. I coached uh, with my daughter um, an Oak volleyball team. And our last practice as a team we had together, we invited the parents to come, like parents versus the kids. And we had a blast with that. And so I wrote that down. That was my, that was my gift that day, a great last practice. And if we skip down to uh, July 15th, uh, just a little bit down the page here, it says a safe trip. And fun had with our teens on the way to CIY conference. I was going to CIY conference. Uh, God's beautiful creation and the nature I saw as we drove to Arkansas. Um, a great first night of Christ in youth and the great impact it's already having spiritually. Those were the three things that day I was thankful for. In August, on the 15th of August, uh, uh, it was uh, cooking out yummy steaks. Um, hanging out with my girls, with Amy and good personal conversations with all of my girls. Um, and September 15th, some of you may remember this. Had a sick day for church service, but Seibel and the team at the church did great. Abby made it back to college safe, even with one headlight out. And the Chiefs beat the Bengals by one. And also on that one, I put also family pictures with Megan. We had family pictures with Megan. Um, and you can just go through, and it could be, I mean, a lot of times if you're in the January, February in this, a lot of it is, I love fire, and I love fireplaces, and, and so I love burning a wood-burning wood, wood burning fire. And so a lot of it's like fire, fireplace at night, sitting in the living room with my girls just talking. It's, it's those things that it's a discipline that I've had to do to recognize and what I can share with you is it is, I believe, it's changed my outlook and my perspective on life because I have these constant reminders. And what I do is I set this on my nightstand. It's a discipline. Every night before I go to bed, it's part of my nightly routine now and has been for almost a year, is I get this out and I write three things. Three things, three gifts from the Lord for today. And there's some days you're like, hmm, man. I wrote three things down when I had a car wreck and it popped my tire. I wrote three things down that day. As I've disciplined myself more, I've, I've found that it's almost easier to see the things, see the little things in life, see the little gifts and the gratitudes and the blessing. And I feel like it's changed my life and I guess I'm just crazy enough to think that maybe it could change yours. And so we have created our own little resource for you. It just says gratitude journal. These are gonna be available on a table out here in the East lo Lobby as soon as this service dismisses. And this is the challenge for you. I'm gonna call it the gratitude dare, the gratitude challenge. If you're willing to accept the challenge, I want you to pick one of these up. The cool thing about this is you can start any day. I say today's always the best day to start something new, so I'd start today. So what you would do today is November 3rd, so you would open this up, and there's instructions in it on how to do it, and I, I'll be out at the table, I'll, I'll walk you through it, but you'll turn to the day that's got the third up in the corner. It's got a blank here for the month, you'll write in November, 
It'll be the 3rd of November, and you're going to write down three things today. Three gifts, three blessings from the Lord. And then you're going to go tomorrow, and you're going to turn over to the 4th, and you're going to write in November again, and you're going to write down three things. And you can do that every day for a year. Now, don't get caught up. I didn't do it perfectly this day. Oh, I skipped two days and, you know, all this stuff. Now, it's, I mean, I took this thing to vacation. I took this thing to Christ and Youth Conference. I mean, this thing is, if I pack in my bag, this is in there. I always put it with my socks. I don't know why, but I always put it with my socks. You know, you got to have socks on. And so you see that, and I, I, I take it with me and... But uh, it's free if you'll accept the challenge. And, and we bought a lot of these so that we'd make sure that we had enough for everybody. And so I invite you to consider, what could God do in your life if you would take this challenge and every day as a discipline, you would write down three things that you're grateful for. Three gratitudes, three blessings, three gifts from the Lord, and, and, and see in a year how this might change your perspective, how this might change your outlook, how this might change your relationships, how this might change your viewpoint of God, and how this might change your life so much so that you could read a passage like 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, and say, you know what? Huh. I can rejoice always. You can always find something to rejoice about. I will pray continually to stay connected to God. And I will be thankful in all circumstances. Because this is God's will for me. But it's possible in Christ Jesus. I'm going to be starting over. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to do it again just because it has grown me so much this year. I invite you to take the next step to grab a gratitude journal, to join me, and let's find out what God can do in our hearts when we practice the spiritual discipline of gratitude. Let's pray about that right now. Lord God, as we come into this season, the most wonderful time of the year, the holiday season, Lord, we know for some of us it's, it's tough, it's rough. For some of us, this season represents a lot of things. Maybe it's hurt. Maybe it's pain. Maybe this was the season that we lost, we lost grandpa, we lost dad, we lost, we lost somebody, Lord. Maybe this is the, the season that, man, I'm just sick of all the consumerism, and I got to go here, and I got to do this party, and all this, and I want to put up lights, and I want to put up a tree, and I want to do all the things. And, and when, when her family comes to Thanksgiving, oh, you know, and Lord, we find ourselves just being gripey and, and grumpy and negative, and we're not rejoicing. <laughs> Maybe we're not praying, but we're definitely not thankful. So God, as we uh, unpack this the next several weeks, we're going to look at a lot more scripture that talks about Christians and being thankful and grateful. Um, God, I pray that we could mature to a point where it is not circumstantial for us. Yep, when my circumstances are right, I'm super grateful. But no, Lord, we, in the midst of, of the hospital stay, in the midst of the financial thing, in the midst of our, our job, in the midst of our struggle, in, in this relationship, in our marriage, in the midst of our, our, our kids and what's going on with them at school, in the midst of, of all of the things, Lord, we will find ourselves to have hearts full of gratitude. Because we know, God, when we do, it actually changes everything in our life. And God, I think that's what we're after. That's what we're asking you, Lord. We know it's possible in Christ Jesus. Lord, this morning, if there's anyone that's out of Christ Jesus, they're not in Christ Jesus, they're out. Lord, this isn't a try harder, do this. Uh, it's not possible without Christ Jesus in your life. It's just not. And Lord, for some of us, we're so distracted by the things of this world, the pursuits of this world. We're so busy, you know, building our houses and doing our things and building our business and all of these things. And Lord, you're, the, you're, you're in the background. Oh, you're over there on the left. Oh, we'll, we'll see you at Christmas Eve, Lord. And, but God, you want to be there and there every day. And this is just an exercise, a way, a discipline where we can see you every day. 
and be people that are thankful in Christ Jesus. And we want to pray all these requests in his name. Amen. What a great reminder about gratitude. We are so blessed and have so much to be thankful for. Part of our service each and every week is we get a chance to give to the Lord and for his kingdom. Uh, before we talk a little bit more about that, I want to just tell you, kind of a, give you an update. For many weeks in a row, we were collecting money through our dollar club to send to hurricane uh, relief victims. And I don't know the exact number, but it was over $5,000 that we put uh, by each of you into the dollar club. Some of it was a dollar at a time. Some of it was maybe five or 10 or, or, or more, but thank you guys so much. And I believe there were four trucks that were sent, uh, loaded with stuff, supplies, water, food, uh, necessities that they weren't able to get down there that we were able to help participate in, in getting those items to people that you'll never meet probably never see this side of heaven, but you were able to contribute. Thank you guys so much. What, what a generous church we have. Uh, each and every week, though, we do have a chance to, to give to the Lord's work, and you can see the ways that we do that on, on screen. Uh, another way that you can give is, uh, well, you can see here I'm wearing a bandage, and it wasn't because of an injury, because I gave blood this morning, and there's a bus out here in the parking lot, you can go out there and it will take you less than 30 minutes to give blood. You'll have a chance to save somebody's life and they're gonna give you a neat long sleeve t-shirt too. So uh, just a way that we can also continue to give. We have a family that's gonna be joining with us today. So I'd like to ask the Goodman family to come on up here, please. And you guys get to come clear up on, onto the stage here into the light so everyone that is watching online can, can see you as well. We have Caleb and Samantha Goodman, their son Joshua and daughter Vanessa, and they come today, uh, baptized believers in Jesus Christ. They want to place their membership, stack hands with us here at Oakwood, become part of our church family. And one of the things that we get to do, and you get to hear, we recite our profession of faith together. So the Lord tells us if we will confess him before man, he will do that before the Father in heaven. And so you not only get to hear their profession of faith, but they get to hear your profession of faith. So let's uh, repeat that profession of faith to Jesus Christ together. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and He is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Thankful for that. We're excited to have the Goodman family join with us and excited to serve Jesus together, to grow, love, and live Jesus together, and just to be a part of our church family. So we're going to pray and ask God to bless not just the Goodman family, but our, our time of offering as well. And so I'm going to ask that you stand, and please remember that if you have a need in your life, maybe you need to be prayed for this morning. Maybe you've got something going on in your life that you just need to, to speak with one of our elders or staff. Some of us will be down here to the front. We'll be glad to minister to you during this time. Father, we are so grateful for the love that you give to us. And Lord, as we enter this season, uh, this month of Thanksgiving, Lord, help us to, rem to remember how much we are truly blessed. We're blessed because you love us. Your hand of blessing is on us, Lord. Thank you for that. Lord, we don't deserve what, we, what you give us. And what we do deserve, Father, you don't give us because you took the place for that sin, and we're grateful for that. I pray this week we will be your hands and feet. We will go out into the world to serve Jesus, whether it's in our, our school hallways, our workplaces, our neighborhoods. May we just be your light, be salt and light to a community that so desperately needs to, to see Jesus. 
Father, I just thank you for what you will do through us this week. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week serving Jesus.